blast them through that stuff so you, you're just calling the more high priorities. Are you, when you say uh, you have all these superintendent candidates that you want to reach out to, is that what you're saying? There's openings, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, you, you, when you say openings, okay, so you have a, you have a search for a superintendent. And you've Correct. gathered all these names. Yeah. And now you want to reach out to them and say, hey, I want you to come work for my client, basically, right? Absolutely. I mean, in the okay. old days, I mean, we've both been at this such a long time. In the old days, yeah. we, we had 100 candidates, 100 candidates, and we'd make a placement. And that's the fucked up thing about what we're doing now, it seems. We had so few candidates back then, and we made great money. Now we've got- Think about why, think about what you're saying. Back when we had 100 candidates, we took our time and we singled out the 50 superintendents who were a 30 mile radius from our client's office, right? Exactly, exactly. And we called them. So that's what exactly the same thing that I do, okay? I still focus on finding 30, 40, 50 candidates who are within a 30 or 40 mile radius of, let's say, um, the office in Chicago, or let's take a, a smaller town, the office in uh, Vero Beach, Florida, right? So I'll, sure. I'll, I'll focus on here's 30 people I know are, I don't have to relocate them. Uh, they have the experience. And then if you want to reach out because you don't think of those 30, you might not make a placement because the, the market is really tight. Then do that mass email, email campaign to that larger group that it's, you know, you really can't call a guy. Let's say, let's say your search is in Denver, right? You can't call people in Boston and New York and say, hey, I'm a headhunter. You want to move to Denver, right? I mean, you'll get brain damage doing that. But oh, yeah. you can, with today's tools, you can um, attack a much larger group that you wouldn't attack before. So I always say it's like a two-pronged thing. I do what we've always done, right? That 30, 40, 50 people who are within a, a, a commutable distance to the client and then send out an email campaign to everyone else, right? That just in case they're willing to move. Like we, we, we send an email out along the lines of, we're doing one right now that says, hey, I'm Tom, I'm a headhunter, blah, blah, blah. I know you're in New York, Boston, Chicago, Los Angeles, Portland, Denver. Uh, and at your, at your level in engineering or, or project management, you probably aren't able to afford a house because it's super fucking expensive. I have an opportunity with a Fortune 500 company who pays Denver wages in a place where you can buy a three bedroom home for 200 grand. Absolutely. If, you're, if, if home is where you lay your hat and you're open to talk, give us a call, whatever, right? It, it's a lot more, but that's the big, the basic gist of the email is, Hey, if you're willing to relocate, I got a great opportunity in a place where you can finally buy a home. So I'm playing on the gen X's or the gen Z and the gen Y or whatever the hell they're called inability to buy a house because it's so expensive to live in Denver or, annapolis Absolutely. and hey hey if if you're okay you can come work for this company make a hundred grand and you can get a, a three bedroom two bath on a half acre for 250 grand so that's how i would do that i would do the that fundamentals, the same the fundamentals aren't changing that, that's true the fundamentals yeah. aren't um yeah i made a very quick thank thank thankfully for zoom info i i'd never found a um a legal assistant and i went to zoom info got the list downloaded it there you go, dude. It paid for itself. We, I was giving you a hard time because you signed up for it. It was expensive. It's paid for itself already. Triple. Yeah. So, I like I said, I'm not a big Zoom Info fan, but in the real world of things, all we need to do is make one email. I'm sorry, one placement, and we've paid for what Zoom Info costs. So, but you're using sales, sales QL in place of that? Yes, I do. So, I use Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator and Sales QL to accomplish the same exact thing within reason that Zoom Info does because I'm cheap. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably change. It's well, kind of like do is if you really like Zoom Info, I know you, there's a guy selling a, a Zoom Info account on Facebook the other day for three thousand dollars that expired in I think August. Yeah, yeah. So you can find those things too. Um, sure. Hey, America, how are you? Good. I actually get Zoom info through Chad Spencer. I paid five thousand this year. Mine. Oh, yeah, I paid five thousand for Zoom info this year. How many seats do you have? How many? What? I just have. It's just one. 
see, that's the thing. Like you and Steve and me and Cal can all get together and and and, and probably get a much better deal. There's a yeah. couple guys out there that do this. There's a guy who I had a, a conference call with many many months ago. I think back in like Steve June maybe or May. Who was selling off Zoom info seats for eighteen hundred dollars for the entire year? Are you kidding me? God, that's and great. Full, yeah. it's the full, the full thing because he's got thirty some people splitting it, and he's allowed to add two oh, at a time. Oh, I he see. Add just one, so he has to be able to add two people, and he keeps reducing the cost. So the more people they get, he ends up getting the cost down. Yeah, and I think he's wow. probably not even paying for his anymore. But yeah, that's why so, I was sales navigator. I was getting sales nav for thirty nine. But oh, then, so was I. Yeah, forty but bucks. You dropped months. it. I think you're getting. Were you getting it through Connor? I get it through Apple. Um, oh. I uh, the Apple Store, and I get it for seventy nine dollars and fifty um, in mails for seventy nine dollars a month. That's not bad. That's, that's, that's the best deal. And there, the, my girl in um, the, my girl in Pakistan, who was getting me the the navigator three months for for forty dollars. She's like, oh, we got it back, but it's two months for fifty dollars. So it's really not to me. It's not worth it because it, it resets every two months too. So you lose all your leads, all your contacts, all your oh, touches, yeah. everything. So it's just not worth it for me. I mean, I, I don't. If if it was three months for thirty bucks, I'd probably deal with it. But for seventy five dollars, no big deal. Yeah, you have to be very. You have to be very acute when it comes to saving all your searches when it renews. I that that was the problem. QL is how I did it, right? So every time I did a lead search, I made a sales QL folder to match the lead search every single time. That way, when I lost it, I could see on my sales QL all the leads that I had found on the LinkedIn Navigator leads. That's the only way I could figure it out. But it still messes you up because I don't know about you guys, but on Sales Navigator, I love the fact that you can um, exclude people you've talk to like looked at before you can exclude people who are in in lead groups right yeah. so when all those lead groups disappear you can't exclude them anymore and i just found out you can search by groups now on navigator i didn't even know you could do that so people who are in um uh, you know a, a food manufacturing group you can search all the people in a food manufacturing group or you can exclude all the people in the food manufacturing group that you know now sales navigator's got some really cool tricks that i like the only one that me and Ernie figured out, you can't figure out. I, I got in trouble because I wanted both sales. I mean, I I knew that I I've got to. I just did away with my recruiter light, but you can't have both of them. I guess somebody said you could, really? and I don't know how true that is. Um, uh, Natalie said she has both right now, and really? maybe she's got one on her husband's email or something. I don't know. But I heard that they might be letting you to have both. Yeah. I like Sales Navigator more than Recruiter Light anyways. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to let it go. Maricar, uh, Steve was as, asking. As you're talking about groups, if I can add something. Uh, I, I, I have this food manufacturing industry group that I started, right? And you talk about branding in a way. Well, I changed the name of it to food manufacturing industry group created by Ernie Moreno, the food recruiter, 815 <laughs> Okay, that's Today I get a request for 10. Yesterday I had six people that requested. So every, every few, about a week, I'll get at least 30 to 50, maybe 75 people that requested to join. And my membership. How many people you have in your group? People that have in my group, my 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 membership, my people, uh, my membership is twenty four thousand one hundred sixty five. He has twenty four thousand people in that group, and he has access to be able to directly email all of them, search with them, and he could post. That's the thing. I don't even know if you're doing that. I would be posting that once and, a week, and, open jobs. And, and if they piss me off, I can delete them from the group. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but but the, the so, whole thing, like Maricar, the, you could start the lawyer group, right? Yeah, and and I say this because this group was started because I just said, did you listen to this? We, what was that? I just said, Cal. 
I don't oh. think Kale's heard this. Let's make sure you let, Kale, this is something you would be interested in. Did you hear that? You hear the beginning of it? I started the group. I've got 25. I got 10 people that are requested to join today. And and it's up to 24,165 members. How long ago? Probably about 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Okay, but I started it just by posting the group. And I invited a few people, and it started to just grow. And I find that the more people I add, the more people want to join. And so, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the purpose of the group is just basically to network amongst other food industry people. That's all I put. And people join. And, and it's just a way of connecting to people. But I'm saying, I guess what I tell people, I don't, I've don't. i never seen anybody else kind of create a group and then create their name in there. So I know at least 24,000 24, people know me. And even if they're not connected to me, if, if they're second or third degree, I'll request that they connect to me if they're within what I want to talk to. Because I'm Ernie Moreno, the manager of this group that they know because they just joined it. And and, and, have, so, and you have that right in the heading of the group. The group uh, is after you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I also <laughs> have in the heading of my group my phone number. Yeah. You know, by my name and all that stuff. People don't put that. How do I contact? You can't anymore. You can't put your phone number in your in your um, Shit, you name anymore. It. Mine mine used to be Tom Alasio two zero two six three zero four eight one four. And when I went to update my LinkedIn profile and change stuff, it would not let me update it until I deleted that uh, phone number. Well, I, I, you you look at mine, Ernie Moreno, and nice. you'll see the food industry recruiter, 815-382-0027, Ernie at nlesearch.com. And that is, that, 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 is un, that is under not my name necessarily, but under my headline. Yeah, so... You did your headline like that, right? Uh huh. Yeah. So it comes right under my name. So the kind of you, thing I figured, the kind of thing I figured was if you're gonna, in, in Facebook, the most, I mean, excuse me, in LinkedIn, the most frustrating thing is you find the greatest candidate in the world, or you find the greatest recruiter in the world. How do you contact them? By you go through step one, step two, step three. Instead, make it easy. And I thought they would do something, but nobody did anything. I'm looking at yours right now. Yeah. I got to wow. change that because I did that too, but I didn't even think to put it in my headline. Yeah. And, and, and then you put in your headline and, and then as you, if you look at, if you look at uh, some of the other things like, like, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what I would tell you to do. You know, I, I don't have a website. This is really my website. And, uh, and then if you look at, um, yeah. That, so that's what I would tell you. Just I got changed my headline. I didn't. Thanks, Ernie. I didn't know you could put your phone number in your headline. I just changed my headline. Yeah, and then people can get a hold of you. You know, that's what they want yeah. to do anyway. If they want to talk to you, that's awesome. So. I, I mean, I did I not know that. I, I was, I was, because uh, I had to delete mine when I updated my LinkedIn profile, and was like, I, I, I was like, this sucks. I can't, I can't keep um my phone number there and and that's awesome dude that's awesome <laughs> so now so, what is the name of your group the food at uh, the <laughs> well, I, I can't even remember it half the time uh the food industry man the food manufacturing industry group created by ernie moreno the food recorder recorder 815-382-0027 yeah yep I, I said yeah it's awesome you know, you, you create a group, and you don't know who the group creator is. Why not? Because I kind of got the idea by watching some of these other people that advertise their name. They said, do some branding. And I figured, oh, shit, that's, that's some good branding there. <laughs> there's his, there's his, uh, his group for anybody who didn't go to it. Yeah. So he created 24,000 members. And... Um, the one thing I don't know if you're doing this, but he can because he's the because he's the admin. He can post every day in that group, right? I started one, and I only got um, <laughs> like 20 people <laughs> in no, mine. It, it takes, so what, it what, takes, what, what's the, what's the name of yours, Tom? 
hold on, let me see if I can find it. Because I, I now that Ernie Ernie made made me think of something is that I when I first started it, Ernie's the one who who I um got the idea from. And then I didn't know how to um uh like get people to, to join. Uh-huh. But now it makes makes sense. I should probably, you know, be posting about it every couple weeks. Or, and or you can invite people to your group. And, that's and what I did. I invited some people to my group, but I, but I um, in, I, I felt that, weird. <laughs> well, yeah, but you invite you invite them to, you invite them to the group uh, that people that you're connected to, right? And and then and then what you find is that as it grows in number, of people more people want to join because everybody wants to join the big groups. And uh, group, yeah. how do you find out what groups you're in? Uh, I don't know. It has some groups. Well, you go you go to your page and it just says groups. This is managed groups or things of that. My page. Or to your your face or whatever, it'll tell you. Yeah. It's the companies you're with. Your profile. Just, you go to your profile. Yeah. But, but, Education, volunteering, skills, talent well, acquisition, recommendations, languages, interests. Oh, groups. There it is. And, and, I, and, I, call, I, I tell you, this is the one I started. Yeah, I mean, and but you see, you don't put your name on there, and you don't put your phone number. You're gonna try to do that, Tom? Yeah, and you know, and I can tell you when I hit twenty thousand, I thought oh, I'm gonna try it, just see. And I thought people are gonna drop out. Nobody dropped out. I'm, gonna do that yet. I'm it, not gonna do that yet. I want to get more people. You're right. But but I didn't think people were gonna drop out, but they joined. But they may join because you're Tom instead of just to be in a group and that's why i would put my name on there and just see how it goes you experiment with it take a chance and then Tom, what do you think is the downside of putting everything that ernie put up there um don't I tell me you're guess, shy no i guess i want people to join it because um and not and not i guess i don't i don't want people to join not join because oh it's run by a headhunter Right, like um, I want it to be more of a where everybody joins because they're in civil and structural engineering in manufacturing, right? And then, like I already said, you get twenty thousand, and I could put on there, you know, civil and structural engineering manufacturing. You know, this group was created by Palermo Roads and Tom Alashi or something like that. I don't mind doing that now, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I, you're, I, um, wrong. you're wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> 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 look at look at check this out about this group right it says our group is dedicated to addressing the issues and challenges facing companies and individuals within the food manufacturing industry i think beautiful that's it yeah. <laughs> no you know what i think this brings up guys and gals it is in some ways i know speaking autobiographically that my and i think tom's hinting on it right here is our fear of being audacious sometimes i mean look at all the bullshit that's out there with other people marking their their hack hackney stuff um that's it that's a great point i don't want to be like the guys that are trying to constantly sell <laughs> their crap that they can make you a billion dollar bill or they can do this that and the other thing for you i i, I mean i'm good at what i do and i want people because of my reputation and the person i am not because i'm like hey look at me i'm great come i, I mean I, I don't mind doing that on the phone but i don't know if i want to put that in the group but that's just me i mean i don't know i I'm, now, I'm an arrogant I now person, refer to that I, guess. As, I now refer to that as the george santos school of everything <laughs> i but i have not listed on my group the fact that i've won a olympic gold medal and a former member of congress myself you're not giving yourself enough credit man 9 11. i gotta i gotta change it <laughs> hey, kelly what are you doing why aren't you talking kelly kelly's working what's up Seth? somewhere along the way uh, the George Santoses and some of the people that Tom and I know that have these these groups that they tout make a million dollars. They've never 
suffered from what I think a lot of us in this group right here suffer from, and that's the imposter syndrome. They have they don't have that in their DNA at all. And I am constantly suffering from imposter syndrome, even though I've been doing this for 30 years. Well, yeah, well you we can, you kinda you kind of look at people that ask you for advice and 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 as you're as an oldster, I, I've kind of learned that for the most part, people that ask you for advice don't do it for the sake of wanting to learn more. They do it for the sake of not having to learn. And I, I've added people, I've added people on, I've tried to work with them, and actually I've gotten frustrated with them because they're lazy. And and you can tell them things and some will get into it, some will tweak it, some will change it. But that's why I like this group because people will kind of like take those ideas and then try to grow with it. Now, How many people do we see asking the same question over and over and over again in the groups? Oh, How the, do I develop business? Yeah, and 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 that's good if you're if you're new and, and want to learn, but when people say you don't have to go to college to learn and all this, that's true. But what you have to do is you have to learn how to learn. Absolutely. And 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 that's a part that a lot of people think by listening to some of these trainers to say you can make a million dollars by just listening to me and you bill at 10% and all these other things and people give them their money. And you hear the success stories because when I listen to podcasts and I listen to a lot of podcasts, I notice some of these podcasts talk about success stories, but they're also, they throw in the fact that, okay, let's talk about, how we got together and my training helped you. And, and I'm saying, okay, that's bullshit. I want to talk to a, a person that interviews, like the, I think there's one called the Elite Recruiter. He interviewed Bill Mena or Mena. And he, he interviews people that he's not connected to. He just interviews them. Yeah. And and that's, that's the, uh, those are the good ones, you know, when they talk, but when they start talking about, I'm interviewing you, and you just started last week, and now you're making over a million dollars. You know, like that's bullshit. You know, oh, but, absolutely. But that that's that's my my two cents in it. Like that guy, who's that guy that's running around now selling all this um, sale? He, he he's a uh, selling sales training. He's real big right now. I think he's a Scientologist. And uh, mm -hmm. and my question to him is always, if you can turn me into a million dollar salesperson, and I only got to pay you. I don't know, 5,000 a month. Why aren't you just hiring sales guys to work for you to bring in a million dollars and you keep 20% or whatever it is? If, if you're as good as you say you are, why are you making me a competitor? Well, a lot of it has to do with the fact of what you are. Are you a recruiter? Are you, you, would you prefer training? And then, or do you prefer sourcing? Or do you prefer this? Because I see a lot of really top notch sourcers. And I'll look at LinkedIn, and I, they're my heroes in sourcing, but they're open to work. And then you, you just look at that sourcing thing, and, and you think, okay, how, how steady is that? Or how do you take that skill to turn it into your, 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 your dream job if you don't have somebody, if you're not a corporate recruiter or a corporate sourcer? If you're a headhunter and you're out of work, you're not a good headhunter. You're not a headhunter. <laughs> well, you're not a headhunter. Well, you you three, I was li like I was telling Tom yeah, last week. I I was on some phone calls, so I had you guys on on YouTube, and all all you the three of Kale, Tom and, and Ernie all said exactly what's been in my mind for the last five or six months. When you see these plaintive plaintive pleas from recruiters heavy heavy quotes that i just lost my job at uh, aws or or whatever where um a lot of candidates came to us and me and i just shot them out to hiring authorities i need a job it's like i, I and, you know i'm i remember when i i had my own firm for 25 years and then i just said i was going to go internal did it for 2 years but i when i quit i had 
I had interviews within three days and I actually got offers within a week, decided that no, you know what? I'm not a very good employee as it turns out. I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm just going to go back and do it, do it myself because I don't, I'm an old guy, obviously. I don't need anybody telling me I'm incapable of learning fast enough. I already know that. Well, Ernie's the best. We can never go work for anybody else anymore. <laughs> no, we, we just can't. It, it, that's that's part of why you do this as an independent. You can never go to work for anybody else because you don't you don't want anyone telling you what to do. You don't want it want from the simple things like telling you when to be at work, telling you what to do, how many phone calls to make, how many of this, how much that. Hell, all I care about is do I make any money? And if I make money and take care of my bills, I am fine. And it doesn't have to be a million. It doesn't can be a hundred thousand, a million, whatever. But it's what I need. And what I tell people is two things. One is my job is my family. Everything I do goes to supplement that. And if you have that attitude, you're not going to be the million dollar biller who's been divorced three times. The, 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 the second part of that is I just don't like anybody telling me what to do. And I want to do what I want to do. Like, if I want to start at 11 o'clock. That's why you don't work engagement searches. That's why you don't work engagement searches. You don't want to be stuck to anybody. I, I, don't, I feel like they own me. If I do retain, they own my ass. Oh, yeah. And, and, yeah <laughs> and, and, you, and they're, like, calling you up every day. Did you find anybody? No, I can't find anybody for, you know, you want you want a vice president of finance for 100000 No, I'm not going to find anybody with all the skills you want and you know but i took your money anyway because i needed it but you know it, you got to be real particular but you have to understand how that works but, this uh, last week don't don't ask for something you don't want right don't tell them okay i'll take on your search for a 10 grand engagement fee thinking that i'll share them off and then they say oh sure no problem and then you're then you're screwed yeah you, know, you, you took on a search you know you couldn't fill and you wanted to scare them away with 10 grand and but thought hey if they're willing to give me 10 grand maybe i'll fill it now you're stuck they gave, sent you ten grand. And you can't find a, the the VP of finance at that low salary. You know, and just be careful yeah. what you ask for. Yeah, and that and that's 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 a real key to it. it it's like uh, this job is meant. It, there's two people. There there are employ, recruiters who are employees and recruiters who are crazy and entrepreneurs. And we aren't. If you're running your own shop, you aren't a recruiter. You're an entrepreneur. And I hear everyone say, "Well, I'm a recruiter." And I don't think of myself in the same light as somebody who's a recruiter for an agency or somebody who doesn't. Even, but if you're working for an agency, but you have total freedom, then that's cool. That's what you want. Well, I think that's what you give your associates or whatever you call them, your recruiters, is you pay them a big enough split that and you're not hounding them for how many calls you made. You know, what's why were you on that phone call? I mean, I remember my agency days many, many years ago, and I got to tell you, and, and, and I think Tom knows a little bit about this, but I have never yet, not even one time, heard a story of a bad boss that even slightly even comes close to the boss that I had my first rattle out of the box as a recruiter. I mean, th th there were times when I would look at this guy and say, this you know, one time a, a woman's, one of my office mates' mother had committed suicide. And he said, the best thing for you to do is to keep dialing the phone. <laughs> I am so glad I left agency because I was the top performer and they gave me some room where I hardly ever worked on Fridays. I'd work half a day Fridays. But that's just because I was the first guy hired and I was a pretty big biller. But I still would get the stink eye. If if I had a bad, if I had a, if I didn't do thirty thousand in the month and it was towards the end of the month and I tried to leave, he'd give me a hard time. You're not up to expectations. You've only done X, and it's like, man, you're paying me a draw. You're not even paying me a salary, and I brought in six hundred grand pretty much every year, and you're going to give me a hard time because I'm I'm leaving. You know, it, it well, was, that, that, that's like the story where the guy says, goes and the agency owner goes and shows the the recruiter his new Maserati and he says and I did this because you helped me 
he goes, and if you continue to do this, I'll be able to buy a second Maserati. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I remember going to my boss and saying, listen, I've got my, my wife at the time had, had called and said that they couldn't, they couldn't find a heartbeat. It was for my second child. Would you please come and, you know, she needed some comfort. My wife needed me. Right. And I got up and was walking towards the door and the, and the, and the manager said, what are you doing? I said, my, you know, she needs me. Uh, we may have lost the baby. Well, you may or may not have your job tomorrow then. And I said, I, I want to be very clear here. Are you telling me that if I go comfort my wife, that you may take my job away from me? And that, amongst many other reasons, was my my departing salvo with that corporation brought the downfall of 19 managers in 19 different offices. I was so angry. Well, so no, I'm not a very good employee. And that's that's the boss from hell syndrome. But yeah. just in order for you to do what we do, you have to have a boss from hell story. Well, I think it helps. Yeah, I, I mean, it it's just like it's like they gotta burn they gotta burn the ships, and you have to be able to say, "I don't want to go back and do that." I mean, yeah, I, I used to milk a rattlesnake. I used to be vice president of human resources of a company with two thousand people, and I would look over the people who were clerical and you know the big mass, and I would say to myself, "They are happy. Why am I not happy?" I want more, and and you think of the old song, "Is this all there is?" And 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 um, there was more to it than just trying to have that title. But I realized that once I lost the VP of HR title, where people were coming and kissing my butt, bringing me coffee and everything else like that, they all went away. Oh, and they would introduce me. This is Ernie Moreno. He's the VP of HR, and that was at a at a at a. Um, a social setting and i'm going when in the hell did that become part of my name yeah really and then now i'm <laughs> ernie moreno nobody <laughs> i'm a food manufacturing industry group created by ernie moreno the food I, I, that's who you are <laughs> I, I call myself the wizard <laughs> make, go, hey, because they want to i i've met maybe 10 people at all you know in 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 i don't go out and see people i, I stay in my office and, and I had a friend recently that I placed 15 years ago. And he says, I finally want to meet you. I'm going to go buy your town. We're going to have coffee. So we had coffee and we laughed. And he's, he said, I finally got to meet you after all these years. And we talked three or four times a year, man. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I said, I, I am the wizard. I am the wizard. Uh, disregard the man behind the curtain. That's right. <laughs> I will not talk the, the to you. The proverbial voice of opportunity. Yeah. I mean, and, and I mean, we laughed and he bought me lunch and it was great. <laughs> Maricar made a good comment. She said, um, it was nice to hear that um, not saying about, you know, not asking for a retainer because a lot of groups encourage everything a retained search, you know, and, and Ernie only works contingency. And I say, I work both, you know, I, I'll take on contingency searches that I know I can fill, or I think I might be able to fill, but I don't want to be buckled down by them. And then I'll take on engagement searches that you know, I want the, the client to put skin in the game or it's a harder search. So I want to be paid for my time and materials. Even if I don't fill it, I'll get clients that'll ask me, hey, we have two internal candidates for this engineering manager position. Can you see what you can dig up? And I'm like, hey, it's going to cost you five grand. I'm like, OK, no problem. You know, awesome. and I'll go out and, and, and bring to them what I can or can't. Hey, there's nobody out there and they're happy. They want to make sure that and they trust me that I'll do a thorough search for <laughs> that position for them so they can compare what they have in house. And that's, and we're, our time is worth money. It, it, you, you have no problem, no problem telling a client, my time is worth money for in certain situations. And, and the whole point of it though, is you do what you want to do. You do what is best for you, your personality. And there are people who could never, ever become entrepreneurs. They could never do that because for whatever fear plays a big role in it and fear of lack of security. But our system, our capitalistic system is designed for you to not be an entrepreneur. 
Oh yeah. You know, oh, and, and I'll start the healthcare system, system is the biggest employee. problem. Well, well, the thing is this: when people say, "Yeah, but I got healthcare," and I tell them, "Well, do you know how much it costs?" and they'll just say, "No." I go, "Well, that's the first thing. Go figure out what it costs." And somebody told me, "Oh, it cost me like a thousand dollars." Okay, okay. So that benefit that's keeping you from living your dream life is twelve thousand dollars. And then once you become old enough and you hit Social Security, you get Medicaid. <laughs> Medicare, it's a lot less. I, I will so, push back though that if we had universal health care in this country, that more people would take a chance. More people can, would take yeah. the chance to be artists, to be musicians, to do whatever, because in certain situations, if you have like my wife has uh, diabetes and epilepsy. Right. And when I went off on my own, I could she could not be without health insurance. And a big chunk of my nut every month was twenty five hundred dollars to pay for the health insurance. So she had health insurance. So, you know, had I not, I'm, I'm crazy, right? I'm willing to take stupid risks, but a lot of people won't do that. But, but you see, the thing is because of Obama, we got rid of the pre-existing yeah. as being an eliminator. But this was, this and was before, before that. Wait, yeah. But way before that, my wife had breast cancer and 10 years before that, she couldn't, we couldn't get insurance before they did because they said she has pre-existing and she's covered for everything in medical except for cancer <laughs> and so but it's going to cost you two thousand dollars for her well i think when you when it you know and, and and i try not to be very political about this this thing because it doesn't seem like so often and i agree 100 percent with what tom said about its staunchest creativity and everything not being able to move from job to job to job uh, how often have we as recruiters over the years found a great job for somebody, they're excited about it, and then the last thing is, oh, darn, I just, benefits aren't good enough. And I and I am constantly wondering why, I mean, why is it that we can't get a situation where if somebody has a really good skill, that they can't take that somewhere else without having to worry about what they're going to pay out of their pocket or if their wife children are going to be covered i think it's i think it really hurts this country when we don't have a way for people to go and you know achieve their greatness and it's, and it's called group health insurance you know and it's really weird because as a vp of hr i was able to tell some companies they said well we don't go to that clinic i go well we're going to change insurances that do use that clinic and you have I know right now by looking at the list, you have 600 of our members that go to your clinic that you have, but I'm gonna change it and I'm gonna tell all 600 of those people to start going to your clinic, to this new clinic. So what I want you to do is I want you to make a contract with these people to include them in your new clinic in, in, as part of your coverage. And they go, we can't work. With and we said, we can't do that. I go, you'll do it because it's a lot of money to you. So take care of it and let me know and we'll renew with you if not forget it they yeah, did companies can, do that. companies can do that if you come like Nucor, one of my bigger clients they're self-insured and yeah. they make up their self their, their policy the way they want it and they'll, they'll go to a company and go we want all of our people to be able to come to your clinic and for five dollars and we have x amount of employees how much is it going to cost us okay and they do it so, so, so it just depends big, the, on your buying power but the the biggest thing about it is you go back to learning and if you're going to go and explore other options, then learn. Like, how much does it cost if I were to get my own insurance? How much, what, what would be the give and take? Because as I tell people everything, you, you, if you have a problem with that, just go into the immigrant communities and, and then you find the person that can't speak your language, English. I love this. I and love And then this. ask him, and then ask yourself, I went to school, I know English. I at least went to high school. I know this and I know that. Why does that guy or that gal own five grocery stores and can't speak a word of English? And that's because they didn't do the little stupid thing they tell you to do is get a piece of paper, write pros and cons, and then decide where you want to go. That's my training advice to you. Make sure you have six months of, 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 inch, of, of payments to cover you. You know what? If you grew Everybody up, poor, says that, it, it's like it, if, you if wait you, for that, you'll never leave. If if you if you grew up poor, you got to go back and just tell yourself, when I grew up, I had shit, I had nothing, 
So how's that going to be any different? We, and it's uh, the more I listen to people, no matter what color you are, a lot of them grew up poor. Absolutely. And say, we didn't have nothing growing up. We didn't have this. We didn't have that. You know, and, and, and you just, it just, it, and it goes back to fear. Security Every is. And says, if you're going off on your own, you need six months bills saved up. And, I, and I'm like, are you that horrible of a recruiter? It's going to take you six months to make a placement. You know, you're getting, you're already getting, you're only getting half. You're the company you're working for, you're only getting half. So if you can survive on getting half of what you bring in, are you telling me you, you don't, you need six months to get, now you're getting double. It's, it's like, take the chance. And that's what people won't do. I, I quit a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars a year job with benefits, working for an established recruiting firm to open up my own search firm. I had $22,000 total in the bank. And that included the 401k I cashed in and left my wife and kids in Florida and rented a place in Fairfax, Virginia and made a placement in 30 days for $18,000 and never looked back. But a lot of people won't do that. A lot of people will be like, Tom, you're an idiot. You quit a six figure job. Yeah, because I wanted more. And I didn't. I wanted to be able to sit here in my in my sweatpants with my dogs and come into office at 10 and leave at six and no one tells me what the hell to do. And that's, well, that's, 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 that's the new I, mean, I mean, I have to, I have to disagree here. I, you know, listen. I don't think, I don't think entrepreneurship is for everyone. No, um, I think there's certainly benefits. I don't think everyone needs to be an entrepreneur. The world needs all kinds of people. If you're an entrepreneur, that's great. But the world also needs employees, and that's yeah. okay too. I mean, I, I think you know everyone can decide what they're comfortable with. I don't think I'm superior because I've chose to go out on my own. Um, there's a risk, and hey, listen, there are people that are employees. They're making a shit ton of money, and I say, you know, good for you. I, I don't think that I don't think we're better than other people because we chose to be in our own. Um, no, but, but it, it, well, you know what? If ever if it ever came a situation where I had to be employed again for some god unknown reason, I'd be okay with that too. I think you have to be okay in whatever situation you're in. Oh sure. Um, and without employees, we wouldn't know what to attach our feet to. So, at the end of the day, most people I think really actually do need to be kind of led to what their next step is hour by hour by hour. I, don't, I mean, it's, I think it's great that we're all that we're all entrepreneurs. I'm, I'm definitely an entrepreneur kind of by nature, but I don't think I'm better than other people or, you know, what I mean, like, I, I just I think, you know, I mean, we need employees and Absolutely. there are people, you know, I mean, like, and that's fine. I don't think that I don't think that we're better than other people just because we chose to be on our own. I do yeah. think there is an issue with the healthcare system. And hey, listen, you know what? You know what? The majority of these people in this country didn't didn't want free, you know free health care. A lot of them they don't. At the end of the day, we can all complain about it, but at the, but at the end, end of the day, nobody voted for it. People had all these complaints. We're going to be a socialist system or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? So you know we can all complain about it, but at, at the end of the day, there was a lot of opposition to this idea that it was because it was socialist. So you know so and that and that's if I think. I think yeah, you know, we can all talk about you know we're all capitalists here, but apparently according to capitalists, you don't you can't have free health care or whatever whatever the hell people were saying. No, uh, well, hunting the homeless is socialist to most people. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, number one, people don't know what socialism is. Right. Sure. No, no, I agree. I agree. The, the definition. You just ask them that, and they go, "It's socialist." Well, what is that? And they can't and answer that. And that's the thing with Obamacare. I mean, like all of a sudden socialists, I'm like, I pay a fucking premium every month. And because yeah. and because my income is so high, I pay the full premium. I'm not getting 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 a tax break unless I'm lying, you know, to you know, to the government. So sure. like so I don't know where these people are getting this. I'm like, I'm paying a premium every month. You know, I mean, I'm not sure like how but, this is socialist. I'm paying I, this I, premium. I think the, the point of the conversation being don't be afraid. If you, you can be an employee, you can be whatever you want to be. Right. But don't don't be one of those people that at the end of the day says, Oh shit, I only have like three years to go, man, and now get out of this damn job. Well, yeah, that's true. But I would hate to be that person. Find something that makes you happy because your life is gonna go. And and even if you can't, I there are people that are very happy being employees, but they're not counting the days until they're retired you know and and that's a point i think i'm trying to get at is right a lot of people whether you call yourself an entrepreneur whether you do that if you don't like company a go to company b if you don't like this go to that but 
you have to take the time to learn and not be afraid to learn whatever learning for you is. If you're in accounting, learn a little bit more about accounting. And if you don't like to read it, go to YouTube, look at YouTube. Like another thing, okay, let me switch the topics a little bit here. This whole chat. Uh, GPT. GPT. Yeah. Everybody's looking at it, everybody's playing with it now. Uh -huh. There are many ways that now if you even look at like, what do I do with it? What I'll tell you, my friends, is y'all go to YouTube and type that in. And you will see different things. There are apps coming out with it now. Absolutely. That can, that can get you to do things. You know, and it, it can teach you to write things. It can teach you to, That's what I'm talking about, the little things. That if you're in a job and you know how to use chat, and someone says, can you write a job description? You're either going to be the person that's going to be looking through the internet to write a job description, or you're going to go to chat and you're going to tell it, write me a job description for this. And he goes, 30 seconds later, you're going to say, here it is. Tweak it for me, please, Mr. Mr. My boss, who I love so much. And, <laughs> and, and, and they're going, they're going to look at it and go, you did that fast. Yeah. And, 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 there are ways now of doing videos. There are ways of doing this. There's a ways of doing that. And the more you look at it, there are people who are 20 times smarter than us that are figuring out how to do it. I mean, people are telling how to code. I can never figure that out, even if I didn't know. But uh, but, but you got to stay on top of it. And that's what I'm talking about, learning. You got to challenge yourself to keep learning, to keep learning, and, and, and enjoy learning i had i had a i had a uh, a relative on facebook that said my granddaughter just after many tries finally got a hundred percent in her spelling test and i told her you know what in celebration you can take tomorrow off from school you can play hooky <laughs> it took her many times to get a hundred percent and i'm going ah, what is wrong with you of course i didn't respond but other people were saying, congratulations. Yeah, she deserves it. It's a freaking like it. Yeah, Yeah, and, and that's why we are why we are. So all I'm saying is love learning. Don't love. You don't need to get a college degree or anything else. You just have to love the art of learning and learn how to learn better. Well, it does seem odd to me that... There's so much so much unhappiness out there right now, and there's so much help. And that's what is unfortunate. That, uh, like Ernie says, if you want to know something, get onto YouTube. And I would, I would, I would, I would tell people maybe check three different people on on. Um, you know, if you want to fix something on your car, I've found out the hard way. Don't maybe not just watch one YouTube video. You may want to watch two or three <laughs> just to get a, a range. <laughs> and, and and know what you're good at because I I look at stuff like how to fix a, a lawnmower, right? And I'm going, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that at all. And I'll get somebody, but there are things you're good at and there are things you're not good at. But uh, well, but I'm just other, real grateful for for groups like this. I, I remember years and years ago, I, I I was a fledgling recruiter and I was talking to my my brother who is a writer and he was very secretive he was very secretive about the the uh the the stuff that he would write the ideas that he would come come up with he was working for national geographic he was working for outside magazine uh, was very well accomplished first got across russia on his mountain bike doing yeah. real well Years after I had a conversation with him about, you know, don't don't worry about the competition because the competition is probably pretty lazy. He came back to me and said, you know, Steve, you were, you were exactly right. I could probably literally tell every writer that I know an idea. And uh, it takes a little bit of motivation to actually do the work. He said, so I, I give out ideas all the time. 99% of the time, they just say, oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm not going to do that. It's the same with us. We're going to, for years in the future, share every bit of information that we can about how perhaps we've done things. And it's going to 
be up to the rest of the group to just implement them, I guess. You know, and, and that's like when you deal with like you meet people or you listen to podcasts of people that are million dollar billers and man, they're machines and they're good. Yeah. And I love to listen to them. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and they'll share everything. Yeah. And they're not afraid. It's like being a basketball player. I can, I'll teach you everything I know, but you got to be able to do it, you know? Absolutely. And, and, Absolutely. and they know that not everybody can do it, but they have a system down. But I think the whole point with what we have is what is our system? Yeah. And that's, yeah. and that's the learning part that keeps, keeps changing. Are you guys using video much in your, in your practice? Kale, you are? Yeah, for sure. Um, I got three three YouTube channels, and I try and do every every blog uh, video first. And I have my EA uh, write it now. Okay. Do you yeah. do a lot of writing? I used to do a lot of writing, but not anymore. Who does your writing? You're in a different situation, Kelly. You, I mean, the three of us or the four of us. I'm not sure about Kelly. I don't. I have contractors working for you every once in a while, but I don't have, sounds like you've got a group that you have developed over the years. Yeah. They, they still need help though. <laughs> oh. it's, yeah. Um, but, but definitely you, you can get an EA to transcribe any of your videos. It's quicker to do a video than it is to do a, and, and the reach is like, you know, I, in one video, 27,000 people watch. Now, did you put that video, Kale, on which, did you put it on YouTube and, and refer people to it? Okay. And then also my website, and then we also do some on LinkedIn. Okay, yeah. And then That's I, the next step for me. I also run Facebook groups. I've got one Facebook group that's got 36,000 people in wow. like six months. Holy moly. Wow. How did you do that? It's... It's a niche one. I've got smaller ones that only have a thousand or four hundred, but that that one was a, a good niche to do with Ukraine. No kidding. That's, yeah. that's amazing, dude. I mean, that's that's some huge numbers that I I wow. I now I'm like mine's eighteen people. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> that's some great that's numbers. How, how did you how did you manage to get that much? Um, influence and, and out there how did you get people to like why were they willing to join and you know any tricks that you can say that you know i don't want to reveal you know confidential no, no, information all that but but is it's you know what did you do to get the the, the uh the, the the amount of people that are willing to get into it well facebook will suggest groups to people versus linkedin where i don't think they automatically suggest groups to people anymore so Facebook does the work for you if there's content in the in the group. That was hard to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it a Facebook group that has the all the people or a um oh it's a Facebook group, not Facebook a LinkedIn group. group. No, it's yeah. a Facebook but if you did a Facebook group, what, what what's the title of your group? I'll I'll give you guys a copy. We lost him. No worries, yeah. He's I think he's in a at a client's. Let's see. I'm typing it in. Very nice. Best business in South Hope? No. Mr. K, I don't see your group. <laughs> Hold on. I can find Hold it on. by looking up his name. No, no, I'm, I'm looking it up. He, he's going to put it up, but he hasn't had a chance to. He's trying to find the name of his group. <laughs> That's one of the hard things of winning the group. You got to know the name of it. I think he gave me the finger. <laughs> International yeah, salute. An international symbol. That's right. But no, it's it's um, it's all good. There's a lot of learning with this. Oh, there it is, the Facebook group right there. Okay. Ukrainian jobs for Ukrainians. Oh wow. 
his content's not available. Oh, because we're not members of the group. How do you become members of that group? You gotta be cranium. Uh, no, you, you just gotta ask to join and um, get rid of the spam at the end. There was spam at the end. Yeah, get sorry rid about of the that. Spam thing. Um, but I've, I've created lots of groups, and the big thing is it's not the number of people, it's the number of employers who join them. So I build a relationship with all, all the employers that join these groups. Really? Yeah. So you allow these people to post jobs, uh, Canadian jobs, on your site, uh, and, and it's marketed towards Ukrainian people. Yeah. So there, there's like 150,000 work permits that have been approved for for Ukrainians. So it's, it's pretty good for employers. And even on my own website, I allow employers to post jobs, either paid or free. It just drives more traffic to us, and we get to know more employers. That's pretty cool. I mean, it, the 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 point there is being creative. And and absolutely, absolutely. You know, and it, it's wow. you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work, though. Yeah. Oh crap! Do you find do you yeah. find you have actively? To, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Monitor, do you find you have to monitor it quite a bit? Oh yeah, the number of scammers are insane. Yeah. yeah. Really? But but my my other more niche niche ones are, are better. Where this one's too broad. And yeah, you can get it by just removing this the the spam at the end of the link and it'll show up. Ernie, do you have a Facebook page? No. Yeah. <laughs> Ernie, Ernie is the least technical of all of us. I think he doesn't. He doesn't have. A I website. don't know. He he runs circles around me when it comes to Loxo. Both you guys do. Uh, that's something that we're we're good at. But I, you know, Ernie, um, he doesn't even have a website, but he's got foodrecruiter.com, which brings you to his LinkedIn page, right? Yeah. Which I yeah. Think is great. I've been trying to figure out how to do that too. Like, like, uh, but I don't know what to call myself. Well, it, it just. I don't know. It's it, 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 I kind of look at the website like I don't really need a website. You need if you need anything now. I mean, this is just a thought. Okay, you got this this um, this this program the chat. How within chat can you create something? Because I, I had a friend send me his business summary and I ran it through there and I thought you know what, Psh, there's some thought in this that you can do a you can do a summary page. But nobody ever goes to your website. I, I don't know of you know anybody saying, well, "I want to talk to you." Tell me your website. Absolutely, that's you true. Know, it, it like, or, or anyone says, you know, I won't talk to you. And 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 I think that's one of those things like people push websites. But as a recruiter, does anyone really go to your website and make a decision whether or not to hire you? And then number two, does your website require you to? monitor to keep to do work with it and if they take if it takes 10 percent, then it's 10 percent of you out of your regular work so you need to kind of like make that decision can i do this without that the reality of it is as a recruiter all you need is five to ten clients and and job orders coming from those clients can lead to having a pretty good income yeah yeah and then from there, fifty or sixty bucks having my website designed, and it pretty much is, you know, it's easy. I can go in there real quick and delete a person if I need to. Right now, it's kind of, you know, it's very chill, and it, it gives, in my opinion, to give someone a little more information than my LinkedIn page, right? So if someone wanted to know about me or know what we did, they could go on it and see the three areas we we work heavily in, who all the people are, the contact info. But beyond that, it doesn't need any type of updating. It doesn't need any, I don't have a job board or anything like that. Has, how long have you had your website? Uh, I've had, I've had prsearchinc.com since 2011. I've had this particular website since 2017. Okay. So say five years, 10 years. In all those, in all that time, has anyone ever said, Hey, I saw your website and I want to talk to you. I don't think so. I can't say for sure, but I don't think so. 
Yeah, and that, and that's my point. So how do you get yourself out there? I agree with your premise that it's not a way to build business and people aren't looking for me on it, but I disagree with your premise that you don't need it. I feel like um, as a professional business, it's something that you should, in my opinion, my, my stupid okay. uh, opinion, that, you should have goes, because everybody has one. That goes along with saying, I can fire you today and you're out of my office, but if if you decide to leave, you need to give me two weeks notice. Where in the hell did two weeks notice come from? Oh yeah, no. I, and, I, look, and, I understand what you're saying, but I feel like it's just a, it's, I don't know. If, if you I, don't have a LinkedIn page, I don't. I don't have, don't have business. Page, why? I don't have. I don't have business. No, a LinkedIn profile. If you didn't have a LinkedIn profile, someone's like, why don't you have a LinkedIn profile? Oh, why do you need a LinkedIn profile? But that is where they learn about you. Because what they want to know is, how long have you been a recruiter? Tell me more about yourself. And then somebody will call me and say, I saw your LinkedIn profile. You know you know what you're talking about. And, and I, think you're, what, I think what you're saying, Ernie, and you're always so good at this, is where are you spending your time? Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a website. I don't spend any time on it. I probably should, but then Ernie would say, why, why would you think you should? I think what it comes down to is I, I see, I, I see the, 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 both your points. Tom might say, well, it, it does give some quote legitimacy to my firm. Uh, Ernie says, well, that legitimacy, is it worth spending time reconnoitering it, et cetera? The, the only right. value you would see in a website, okay, that's if you belong to a group and say, like for myself, I belong to a networking group. If I could post all of their jobs that are relevant and it could show me like they would show them that I have like a hundred jobs and somebody could apply to that job and then from there, uh, I get credit for it. And I would get I would get a commission out of it, but other than that, I don't I don't see anything that would get me to want to spend a lot of time in doing it. Well, and you, and I agree. I'm not going to spend time, but I think it's worth having. You get, somebody can get more than just about you; they can get about my whole company and my history prior to what I did. So to me, it's just like um, an easy LinkedIn, way to say, "Hey, check check, check out page. my background." Yeah, I think, all, they know, all, all they know is you're a good recruiter doing what you're doing, and and all the rest is fluff. Well, to to a, a certain degree, I, I think I understand where where Tom's coming from. Is it because, I mean, we're we're always taught you can't measure what you can't monitor, and you can't monitor what you're not able to measure. The fact that he doesn't know, um, I mean, I'm cool with him not knowing if in, if he's made any money off of his. His website, because I'm, well, let, me, I'm, let, me, I'm let me ask you this, though. Would it be different if you could have access to a video that would tell you what I did? In place of the website. In place of a website. I'm on the, on the website. Click this to meet Tom. I think that's great. I mean, here we go. This is why I like this group. You guys are you guys are brilliant. I'm not. I just am a sponge, a really ugly sponge. I like I like that. Click here to meet Tom. Click here to meet Ernie. I like yeah. the idea of putting a video together. I bet Kale probably has something like that. I think that's a good thing. And I think you could have it on your LinkedIn profile. You could have it on your website. You could have it on your Facebook. You know, I I think if it's done properly, I, and I'm not you know, uh, how exactly you do it. But I think that the more teams has become commonplace, my clients all want to talk on teams now. Three years ago, I never had a, a Zoom team, Google meet with a client. Now I have one once a week. So uh, I would love to have the video of, hey, hi, I'm Tom Alasio, I'm a headhunter, I'm wonderful, I'm great. You know, call us if you need to hire people. I mean, that's a great you idea. Know? I think it's a great idea. There's a way. And it ain't gonna cost you any money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, I, I mean, do but I do I don't take much care on my my website, but I, I do get candidates sending this shows how horrible I am at. I have candidates sending me resumes from 
uh, or or four rather uh, positions that I have long either discarded in my mind or not filled or have already filled and didn't take them down. So websites do, uh, they, they, I can't measure how much money I've made off my website. I'm only assuming that it just gives me a little bit of legitimacy. And the only other thing I would say might be to know your, to know your target audience. I mean, when I was doing um, multifamily maintenance techs, there, there wouldn't be much of a chance that I would get their attention on LinkedIn. They're all over Facebook complaining about shit, literally shit in yep. the apartments all day long. So that's <laughs> what, uh, yeah, I, I got so used to just scrolling through Facebook because I don't want to know what you found in the apartment. I don't want to see all the dildos and the dongs and the shit that you're, you're finding because and I've also, I mean, talk about Facebook and I'm sure you guys have said the same thing. I've, I've, I've recommended on the side, not in public, but in a private message. Hey, be careful what you're saying on Facebook, because I know your manager is a part of this group. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I yeah, my yeah. Facebook before I joined all the groups, all these recruiter groups, I scrubbed my Facebook. Yeah. Oh yeah. The first thing I said to my, I, I, I've been on Facebook many, many years. And the first thing that I thought to myself was, you guys might get a kick out of this. My goodness, I'm glad that they can't put up my antics on Facebook. And then, because we didn't have cell phones back then. And I told my kids, now they're 35 and 37, but I told them years ago, anybody with a camera, I mean, with a with a cell phone, also has a camera on it. So let's let's dispense with showing your whatevers, the middle finger. Just don't do things in public that you wouldn't want me to see. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it there's a lot of, but right now today, I think with this chat, there's a lot of things that are going to happen right quick. I think so too. And and you got to you got to stay on top of it. You got to keep looking at it, and 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 if you do, you'll be you'll be glad you did. I yeah, mean, I, yeah. I, I was I, up early this morning on chat, just throwing out. I mean, I went onto YouTube, and and there's some tutorials there that are absolutely awesome about how to format the questions and format every, it. Every every day, I'll, I'll look at I'll look at YouTube in the morning before I get going and find out what's happening with chat. And every day there is somebody that's teaching you something. But what's what really is interesting is the fact that um, there are some apps that are coming out that you can kind of sync with, 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 with chat that can be pretty powerful in your presentations. I mean, even looking at it like, how do we do a better job in writing a LinkedIn page or writing or writing a LinkedIn comment or writing a better email or, or, or things of that sort that, uh, I use that for my LinkedIn post all the time. I use it all the time. Yeah. That. And that, and that, and that's, but I mean, those are the little things that the, the going back, I guess, to the point that I'm trying to create here is that even chat, people don't know about it. And everyone's saying, everybody knows. Call up five of your friends and ask them if they've heard about it, and they're going to say no. So not everybody knows about it. So you can also use this as an intro to your existing clients to give them a little bit of feedback as to a little tool that they can use in their job if they get creative. You're dealing with HR people. You can tell them this is what you can use. You know, I've known you for a long time. Let me share something with you. Yeah. Okay. And then all of a sudden you're that. And, they, and then you just tell them, just remember the recruiter that showed you this. I hope I'm your cousin now. And, you know, and then after that, you ask them, hey, do you have any job orders? And all of a sudden they're going, yeah, I got one I can give you. You make a placement, you make your 20000 and that's only an eighty thousand dollar a year job, and you're you're fine for the month. Yeah, and 
And that's yeah. a, that's a price. That's the thing. If you if so, if that's what you want to do, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but I'm just saying that those are things that 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 sometimes we forget that they're eventually going to learn about it. Why not learn about it now? Sure. Why not you be seen as somebody who's ahead of the ahead of the curve for them, and you're helping it? Because the reality is, partners who are in that we have that are working don't have the time to do what we do or some of them don't know how to do it and and you're showing them this is a tool you can use that can help you whether i i found most people don't know how to write properly most people don't know how to go into the internet you know and and i've spent my whole life writing <laughs> and, and improving and 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 i think i'm a fairly good writer but my wife my kids can shoot me down in a second but but the whole thing is sharing tools and you being seen as that person that helps them because no other recruiter is going to do it because 75 percent of us are just in it for the job order not the relationship not long term and recruiters yeah and and they and they the, the the recipients of our calls recruiter calls know who the good ones are and who the bad ones are because you can ask him, can you tell the difference? They go, oh, yeah, I can tell. where, the And they don't have to be rookies because rookies can be really good. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. They lay it out. I think we discussed this last week. And I think ChatGPT is – when I started out, Headhunt, uh, and we were on Monster and we were a career builder, we were making gazillions of dollars, right, because it was new. Nobody else was using it. Uh, people weren't all over it. It was the next new thing. It was everybody wanted to put the resume on it. Uh, we were able to put job postings on it because I worked for a management recruiter's office. So we had top of the line. Our jobs were up there. And, and, and being part of that was a great thing. We made a lot of money. We came in late. There were other recruiters that I know that, that were on it from day one that made one guy build 600 grand by himself posting jobs on Monster back in 99, <laughs> 2000, whatever it came out. And now Monster Career Builder, indeed, they don't exist. Say, those That's candidates will break your heart. You get a candidate off a job board, it'll break your heart, right? They're looking, they're not, you know, and that's not what our clients are paying us twenty thousand dollars for. You know, they're you know, paying us twenty grand for an indeed candidate. Are you kidding me? No. But you know, chat chat GPT might be what Monster and Career Builder was the day it came out. Like if we can get onto that now and figure out how to utilize it, how to in you know integrate it in with it with our industry and and be the be the ones that are doing it first we could just like if you started on monster and career builder when it first came out well, i don't know how to do it yet but that's what i keep looking at but it but it's kind of like when you figured out that you could send mass emails mass texts if you can do the the the, the email sequence and and when you start learning that you go oh crap this is pretty cool oh god that's, that's all this is but you yeah. have to learn that yeah and and but the other thing too that people do not do is i pick up the phone and i call you guys i find your phone numbers we call we talk what are you doing here what are you doing tweak it there how'd you tweak it there tell me how you do this and please and and we share with each other and i don't think a lot of recruiters do that you know and and maybe it's 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 important it's important to know that when you come on these kind of groups and this kind of situation we talk to each other we build a friendship and that's and that's the point of it. I mean, whether it be this show, the animal show, any other, these guys become your friends, and they know you, and they know that you're willing to share, and they're willing to share, and you're talking about different ideas and the sales QL that that Thomas turned me on to, and I go, shit, this is pretty cool shit. I like it, and maybe how do I tweak it to what I need? And th and that's the whole point of it. I mean, that I I see that recruiters. Don't just focus on getting your day-to-day -day stuff. Go a little beyond it. Pick up the phone as you're making calls. You know. Well, I think I think all four of us are full of people. Yeah. I think all four of us may share the same, and I'm speaking out of turn, perhaps here, but recruiting for me just isn't a job it's 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 something i truly enjoy learning about people's as, aspirations and listening i mean i i have to admit that i 
probably over the last couple decades as a recruiter have spent maybe a little too much time talking to divorced men, trying to help them through their, their situation. I, I do have a soft spot having, you know, uh, been given the heave ho many, many years ago. And I, and I joke with people said, listen, um, getting divorced, uh, made me a better recruiter and being a recruiter made me a better man. Um, so I'm thankful for getting divorced and I'm thankful for the, the opportunity to be a, a recruiter as well. Because I think, Ernie, what you, you might be pointing out is that a lot of people call themselves recruiters, but to me, it, it goes beyond just um, getting people jobs. Uh, yeah. I think we, what we do is rather important. When you yeah. look at the investment that people put out there, whether it be buying a house, buying a car, giving their kid a good education, man, a lot of that has to do with the, the job that they uh, have and the, the income that they produced. So what we do is pretty important. And, and, and when you look at life, and we all think about it, it's like as your kids are growing up as to we're not, in, we're not included in one of those things that that's what I want to be. But it's what you're exposed to as a little kid that kind of lets you think about this is what I can do. But I don't remember a lot of professionals coming over to my house. And, and, and my world was, I guess the only thing you can do is become a teacher, become a lawyer, become a doctor. And there's a lot, a lot of obstacles in that. But I never thought about becoming a business owner. And as I look back, I, you know, I used to pick oranges, right, growing up as in agriculture. And I'm thinking now, you know, shit, if I had my, my act together, I, we would bring home oranges and give them away. Why didn't I put those in the bag and go sell them in the neighborhood? Totally. But then you hear about you hear about people that do that all the time, you know, and you say, "Dang, I wish they would have done that because they could have for a dollar. I could have made you know the good old the good old gray market." Yeah, you know, and 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 just things like that that you pick up. But th those little things that you learn and apply back to your life, you look at it now, and these are the things that we're doing right now. It's a sharing. It's a getting an idea. And if I throw something at you guys, you tweak it, I tweak it back, you tweak it again. And then we share and we say, look at what we came up with, guys. This is a pretty good cookie. We learned stuff from Kale today that I'm gonna look at into, you know, yeah. the group thing. I you know, the you remind me about the Facebook or the LinkedIn group, which I didn't I haven't been taken care of and I probably need to jump back on that. So I'm always learning something, I'm always getting tidbits of information from every one of these meetings. And it, it, I feel that makes me a better recruiter, you know, and, 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 and to what you were saying, I wanted to own a bar my entire life. <laughs> All I ever wanted to do from the time I was 18, right? And I probably still wouldn't mind owning a bar. I just can't make the kind of money bartending that I can as a recruiter. But I mean, this is, a, this is I love my job. I love what I do. Now, I wouldn't do this for free, okay, in, in a, in, at all, but I love what I do for a living. I enjoy coming to work. Uh, I enjoy talking on the phone. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy having clients praise me and saying, you know, it was not for you. We couldn't have done this, that, and the other thing. Those things make me feel great. And I, I'll continue to do this job till I can't, you know, talk, walk, or chew gum at the same time. But you know, if I had my so brothers, I'd be sitting on a beach somewhere bartending. <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny, Tom, you say that you wanted to own a bar. There was a point in time um, that I went to my mom. I don't drink much at all i know there's a lot of money in bars but i went to my mom and i said oh rather than losing so much money in the stock market i should have just bought the bar <laughs> I those two all the time holy cow the reaction that my mother had given that she's got alcoholics as brothers <laughs> one, of my, one of my own brothers is doing great in the alcoholism department um Boy, was she not happy with that thought at all. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't no, be your I, own best customer, that's for sure. But you, you know, but that's like something there, like an alcohol. And everybody has alcoholics in their family. I mean, it's like, and you listen to them, and they, you think about people that they're growing up, they say, yeah, my dad was an alcoholic, my brother was an alcoholic, but it's all these other things. And, and you realize that rather than you think you suffered alone, Everybody went through kind of the same stuff, and 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 uh, you know, I I didn't, my my father drank too much, and I remember the times when they would argue, and 
you'd go to sleep as a little kid with a pillow over your head because you didn't want to hear them yelling and screaming. And and, and it, it just, you find something that connects you, but then you either learn from life what you want to do from your experiences or what you don't want to do. Yeah. And as a result of that, like with my kids, they've never seen me drunk. They've seen me drink, but never seen me drunk. And that was a goal because seeing my father drunk, he was a great man when he wasn't drunk. And he was a kind drunk. He keep quiet, but he was a shell of a man when he was drunk. And I said, I never want my kids to see me like that. So I've never let them see me drunk at all. Oh, totally. But, totally. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, I, but, I've but, been I've been remarried for 10 years now in my uh -huh. life. Honest, honest to God, my wife is probably because of her. She's a Baha'i from the Middle East. She's from Iran. Cool. Um, oh, yeah, because yeah. because of her religion, she she's forbidden to drink. And I, I have told her some great stories about when I've gotten, you know, 12 ounces of courage and. I was quite the, you know, quite the dashing fella. Um, and she she just laughs. She thinks a lot of things that I say is funny. Um, but one day she said, you know, Steve, you, you say that everybody has been touched by alcohol. I haven't. I waited a couple of days. And I said, I know you don't drink. But I think you've been affected by alcohol, too. She goes, that's impossible. I said, no, think back when I was dating you. And you told me about some of your past boyfriends. One in particular, that it prompted you, his drinking prompted you to do two things. Google what constitutes alcoholism, how many drinks a day, I mean, a drinks a, a, a week, and it's 13, I guess. And the second thing it prompted you to do was to drop his sorry ass. Tell me again how you've not been affected by alcohol. You know, every one of us has. Yeah. But again, this whole conversation here brings us closer together. Like we have a connect of some sort, different type of connect. And we. Well, I've, always, I've, I've always told I've always told candidates and clients that I get I get a liberal arts education every day as a recruiter because you learn so much about people, the human condition. What makes people tick? You never know enough. There's always another wrinkle. You think, oh my God, just when I thought I saw it all, this guy brings a snake to the uh, interview. You know, <laughs> well, who, he brought a snake to the interview. And, and, you know, my one of my best recruiting friends years ago from Chicago, Ernie. Uh, I told him the story about this guy who had um, Asperger's. Uh, who, who actually brought a snake to the interview. And I was laughing. My buddy was laughing about the Asperger's, Asperger's thing. And he said, yeah, <laughs> my son's got it. And I thought, oh, God, I wish I could just drop right down into this hole. He said, no, 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 Steve, don't worry about it. This is just the way it is. Again, a liberal arts in out from that moment on. I got a great lesson on the I, spectrum, as it were. I, I had somebody go on an interview during a, a phone interview, a Zoom interview, and he did the interview while he was ordering a hamburger on the drive through Oh wow. <laughs> He's a multitasker. And, and, he, and he couldn't and he couldn't understand why he didn't get the job. And he says, Well, you know, I was hungry and I was going from point A to point B. And I knew they were calling in. I go, but did you have to do it while you were eating? He goes, well, you know, I was hungry. You couldn't set time aside, you couldn't set time aside for something that <laughs> important. Are you serious? Needless to say, he did five not. Five years, no beer? Well, nice. <laughs> I don't think I've won five minutes. So congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm Irish and Italian. So basically, I when I was born, I blew a .03. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, before you go, how about uh, all four of us, your your worst recruiting story in three minutes or less, starting with Steve. The worst, worst, candidate, candidate, worst interview, worst candidate, worst interview, worst client, anything like that. Well, you know, I, I not not to beat a dead horse, but when this guy 
I mean, this, this was with, with Cricket Wireless. They were a good client. But that kind of screwed the deal. And and, I, and I'm, I'm not doing that anymore anyway. But that I don't know if it was the worst or the best story, but it's a combination of both. It's it's it. Sometimes as recruiters, we just don't have any control over the the outcome, or not. We don't have any control over the perception that someone's going to have. Um, right. That that it turned into other things that day because I I was so this guy was so smart. But any and I wasn't picking up on on any of this. Okay, oh, okay. I I will. No, I can't tell you that story because it's it goes against LGBTQ Three protocol. Three minutes. <laughs> no, no. Well, we'll, we'll come back to you. Come back, Kale. Do you have one? Do you can tell us. Do you have enough uh, internet there to tell us a good one? No. Okay. No. Nope. What's, you, what's, you, what's your what's your what's your very quick one that I remember? Made a placement. Get a call. It's a single, a single mother. Get a call. She's she's to start on Monday. Get a call on Friday, and she tells me that she cannot take the job because her seven-year-old doesn't want to move. Oh yeah. And and you're going and seven-year-old yes. Two weeks later, she calls me and she says, "Is that job still open?" No. <laughs> she adopted her son interviewing in Nevada in a town called Fernley and they fly into Carson City uh, uh Reno so it's a straight drive out 70 80 90 whatever that red is he goes the wrong direction and ends up in California goes the wrong direction on the highway calls me says hey I went the wrong direction can I reschedule now this is for a drafting position detailer so I say hey um no problem call the client yeah that's that, that yeah he can come tomorrow shows up the next day in a undershirt with stains on it and jeans with his sister in the car who sat in the lobby and waited for him. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy fail a drug test for uh, crack cocaine who had a master's degree in civil structural engineering and graduated summa cum laude from Tennessee Tech. I had another guy fail, uh, it was an engineering manager for a $110,000 fee, failed a drug test for meth uh, he took methamphetamines like crystal meth and he ended up jumping off of a um parking garage three years later he killed himself and these are guys that are smart these are guys with masters in engineering structural engineering designing the most amazing things and they're doing hard drugs like what are you people what what, what? i just well, wanted to try it is what i was told we're, we're all slowly learning i think that there's no rhyme or reason to addiction no you know, and then the, the thing those guys weren't addicted, they just wanted to try it. I was at a party. One of the guys said he was at a party and he took it with Viagra, and it was supposed to be a lot of fun. The engineer said he was at a football game and his friends were smoking it and he wanted to try it, and that got him hooked. Yeah, we went to hook. They failed a drug test. Oh, they failed the drug test. They that one, that one taking... time, yeah, both. Well, I think the guy who failed the meth. I think he was taking it recreationally with Viagra, but I, he wasn't an addict. But the guy who failed in the crack was not, you know, he, he said, you know, I'm, I'm stupid. I made a mistake. I, I wish I could take it back. I was at a Texas ball, Texas and Tennessee game or something. And I, and my friends were smoking and I, I wanted to try the crack. I'm like, crack, smoke weed, dude. Why would you try something that you could get addicted to like that? I, and this is an engineer. Summa, summa cum laude, he graduated. Well, you know, and people ask me, I don't why get people. do people do this stuff? And they're, they're, you know, why do people do it? And and I and I always just chalk it up to one thing. Human beings as a species are, are very hopeful. You know, that the time, the times that the three of us have had this sort of thing happen and, and think, wow, how, how could somebody do this? I just honestly think that there's something in a human being's DNA that says, I'm not going to. It's not going to happen to me. And I had the lawyer for the company that I, I worked for in, in the multifamily housing industry. He says, you know, the thing that's hard to hard to believe are those people who take a drug that goes in and out of your system so quickly 
that you know it's a day or two and you and you do not but they decide to do it the day before an interview that if they would have just not done that they would have passed with flying colors but something about the human condition says yeah i think i can do this i am immortal i'm running into weed a lot now because weed's legal oh yeah i'm in colorado so yeah it's it's big time legal here and it's it's gotten in the way of a lot of 58 percent i think it's in the 50s 50 the, the streaming wait a second one second steve the streaming is getting uh, to a to i can't stream anymore so hey thank you forever who who's watching this thanks for showing up this was recruiter roundtable 23 uh open discussion and in the chat you'll see the the people who were here and the discussions we talked thanks and i'm turning off the streaming now right on give me a second give me a second and there we go and stop streaming